Do you dread the Christmas holiday? Do you find it ridiculous that every year you are expected to spend weeks in crowded shopping malls, buying gifts for all of your family and friends, and even acquaintances you don't really know that well? Of course, people try to give practical gifts that people really need, but we usually end up getting a lot of junk that we don't really need and will only clutter up the house. And think of all the money spent on buying these gifts. Wouldn't that money be better spent paying off the debts you already have? Not to mention buying a tree and decorations and wrapping everything and planning the gatherings with people you've just spent Thanksgiving with and so on, just to celebrate the birthday of one guy born 2,000 years ago. Don't you wish there was a way to avoid all that holiday hassle and expense? Well, now there is. It's called atheism. Yes, just by recognizing the Christmas holiday as the outdated pagan ritual it is, you can choose not to participate in this yearly waste of time and money, plus all of the other benefits of becoming an atheist. Just listen to this amazing testimonial from famous atheist Carl Sagan. When I first became an atheist, friends and family asked how I could lose my faith in the Bible. And I said, because I have a high school education that prevents me from believing in things like talking snakes, winged babies, and people living to be 900 years old. I still agree with and try to practice the three basic teachings of Jesus, which are 1. Treat others as you wish to be treated, which means don't lie, steal, or harm people. 2. To help those in need, because someday you might need help. And 3. To overcome hatred and ignorance with compassion and understanding never violence. But these concepts are not exclusively religious. They are the foundations of any civil society, and there are many people practicing these ideas who are not Christian. Yet in contrast, I know many people who claim to be Christian, yet do not follow these basic teachings. Case in point, although Christians are commanded not to lie, many Christian parents convince their children in the existence of Santa Claus, knowing full well he does not exist. Of course, there is a practical, although dishonest, reason why parents tell their children about Santa. It's a control mechanism. You see, naturally parents want their children to behave and to follow the rules, but parents cannot watch over their children all day. So they teach their children to believe in a magical man who invisibly watches over them at all times and keeps track of who's naughty and who's nice, because on a special night, he comes and visits all the children. And if you're good, you get wonderful presents. But if you're bad, you get coal. So of course children want to be good, so Santa will reward them. You see how a child's belief in Santa Claus is much like the adult's belief in God. Belief in the invisible, omnipresent watcher who counts your sins so that on Judgment Day, when he returns, he rewards the good with eternal salvation and punishes the bad with a fiery hell. The main difference between Santa and God, of course, is that children eventually figure out that Santa does not really exist, while most adults never question their belief in God throughout their entire lives. It never crosses their minds that maybe, like Santa, they were taught the existence of God in order for religious leaders to limit their thoughts and to control their actions. Religion had its opportunity to rule the world and we refer to that time now as the Dark Ages. After all of the holy wars and inquisitions and witch burnings, and with the continuing conflict in the Middle East, isn't it about time we imagine a world without religion? Hey Marsha, we're gonna go down to the high school and burn all the books that explain evolution. Wanna come? No thanks. Hey Bob, we're gonna go down to Plant Parenthood and shoot some abortion doctors. Wanna come? Uh, no thanks. Hey, Jimmy, want to handle a rattlesnake for a while to prove your faith in an invisible man who lives in the clouds? Uh, no thanks. I'm no longer drinking the holy punch. Thanks to atheism. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not.